My name's Corey, and today we're making this walnut coffee table with textured top. For this project, I started with some rough sawn walnut boards about 1.5 inches thick for the four legs of the coffee table. I cut them down to rough height, then jointed one side flat so that I could glue two layers together for a beefier leg. I applied glue to each side and clamped all four leg blanks at the same time. While the legs were clamped up and drying, I started working on milling the one inch thick rough sawn boards for the coffee table skirt. I cut them to rough length first, then jointed one face and one edge flat to get a perfect 90 degree reference point. Now because this coffee table is going to be slightly textured, I'm not joining and planing everything perfectly smooth, just making it flat enough to work with. With the skirt pieces milled, I started selecting my boards for the tabletop, deciding what side would look best on the top, and trying to avoid any knots or cracks in the wood. Once those were rough cut, I jointed one face and one edge to get a perfect 90 degree reference before passing it through the planer and cutting them to width on the table saw. With all the tabletop boards milled up and cut to their final length, I set those aside and went back to the leg blanks, which were now dry and took them out of the clamps. With the blanks glued up, I milled them up like the rest of the pieces, jointing one face and one perpendicular edge Then pass it through the planer to get a uniform thickness on each piece. And finally use the table saw to cut them to the final width, pressing the flat jointed side from earlier along the table saw fence. Then use the miter saw to cut them to their final height. Now that my long clamps were no longer being used on the legs, I can switch back to working on the tabletop and start that glue up. I used three long clamps underneath the piece, then came back and added two more clamps to the top to even out the pressure and prevent the tabletop from bowing. I also used a level to make sure I wasn't applying too much pressure from either the top or the bottom side to keep the tabletop flat. The next day, I removed the clamps and used a floor scraper to remove the majority of the dried glue from the seams. For this project, I decided to use mortise and tenon joinery. So I whipped up a quick plexiglass jig for my router in order to route the mortises in each leg, slowly lowering the router bit in multiple passes to a depth of about one inch. With the mortises complete on two sides of each leg, it was time to create the matching tenons using the table saw. First, setting my fence so that I would be taking off the same amount off each side, then lowering the blade to finish the tenon.
The mortises in each leg had rounded corners and the tenons had square corners. So in order to make them fit, I used a chisel and rounded the edges of each tenon, testing my fit as I went along. After a quick dry fit, it was time to start working on the texture. And to create that texture, I used a stiff twisted wire cup on my angle grinder and passed it over the surface of the wood. This basically eats away at the softer layer of wood grain, leaving the harder layers of wood grain intact, giving you that raised texture feel. I then followed up with a straight wire cup to smooth out any rough texture, and that was it. With the texture complete, I started gluing up the base. Gluing the skirt to each leg assembly. Then assembling the whole base on the floor and clamping it together overnight to dry. The next day, it was time for finish. I unclamped the base and started with a coat of dark Danish oil to really darken the wood and give it that warmth. I applied the stain using a foam brush and made sure it soaked into the wood evenly. You can really see now how the stain makes the texture pop. I came back 10 minutes later with a clean cloth and wiped away any excess stain, then left it overnight to dry. The following day, I came back to apply the first of three coats of wipe-on polyurethane. When all three coats had fully dried, I gave each surface a quick sanding with 2000 grit sandpaper just to make it smooth to the touch. I attached some L brackets to the underside of the base with oversized holes to attach the top to, in order to allow some room for expansion and contraction of the tabletop over time. With the base and the tabletop both complete, I brought them in the house separately, laid the tabletop onto the base, centered it, then screwed it into place after pre-drilling each hole. After a quick cleanup, the coffee table was done. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.